brothers and sisters, as we prepare ourselves to listen to the Lord's word, let us ask Jesus to fill us with the presence of the Holy Spirit. As Jesus told the disciples, my spirit will tell you and remind you of all that I have spoken. The Lord's Spirit will make clear what is confusion and what is confusing in our minds. Let us ask the Holy Spirit to speak to us this morning. O Spirit of God, we pray that you speak to us as the word is broken. Let our hearts be so responsive to it. Just as the disciples who sat in the upper room were so responsive to you. And at that moment, they went forth, not only to receive the word, but to proclaim the word. O Spirit of God, we sit here in openness to receive his word, the word that is made powerful through your presence. O Holy Spirit, give us a humble heart, a heart that is prepared to change as we listen to the word. A heart that desires change and transformation. The Spirit of God strengthen us. Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. A reading from the Gospel according to John, chapter 20, verses 19 onwards. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he, so, he showed them his hands and his side. And the, then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, today as we reflect on what the Lord has to speak to us about, and what the Spirit is speaking to us about. It's important to understand what we share as a relationship with Jesus. What does Jesus have to offer us that we can then offer to the world? I was in Poland for a few retreats. And in between the retreats, a very Catholic country, myself and my friend, we went to see a few few beautiful Catholic churches, and the place is filled with churches. And as we went from church to church, looking at the beauty and the grandeur of the church, with all its amazing architecture, we entered at around 7, 7.30 in the evening, on a Saturday or a Sunday night, it was a weekend mass, and we went into a church, the mass was going on, and we went right behind so that we wouldn't disturb anyone. Not many people were there around us as everyone was sitting up front. But there were just a few, maybe tourists as well, just like us, coming to see the beauty, grandeur of the church. And at that moment of the Eucharist, it was the time when the priest offered peace and said, the, priest, the peace of Christ be with you all. And then everyone offered peace to their left and their right. And that is when I turned to my left to offer peace to those around me. And there was this couple who was standing there, and they were taken aback. They were not prepared for it. Obviously, they were tourists who had come to see the beauty of the church. They had nothing to do with the service. Maybe they had nothing to do with the faith as well. 
And as I offered peace, immediately they, they put their hands up and looked at me and in, in the English that they knew, they said, no, no, we are not part of it. And I found that very, very striking. As I was offering peace, it's not something that, that people don't want, people don't like. But when I was offering peace, their first reaction turned out as, we are not part of this. We are not part of this. It's like saying, we don't want that peace. Well, the peace that I was offering wasn't the peace that came from me. And that is what it was for all of us in that church. Even if I wasn't a part of the Eucharistic celebration at that moment. But still, the peace that the peace the priest gave from the altar was the peace of Jesus. And that peace is what is being shared amongst the people as well. And what I was offering to them wasn't the peace that I created. It was the peace that I received. The peace, the peace that I received from the altar, from the Jesus in the bread and wine. And that peace is what we share with those around us. But for those whom the, the beauty and the grandeur were all that they were there for, that peace didn't make any meaning. Dear friends, Jesus looked at the disciples and he said, Peace be with you. My peace I give you. Just as the Father sent me, so I send you to give peace. It started from the time when the angels in Luke chapter 2 verse 14 cried out and said, Glory to God in the highest. And peace to his people on earth. Everything about Jesus was this peace that he was bringing down. There were people who were so disturbed, so anxious, just like you and I. When we let Jesus be born into our lives, when we have an encounter with Jesus, it is an encounter of peace. Just as it was for these disciples, they encountered peace again. The word says, the disciples rejoiced. Why did the disciples rejoice? Wasn't it because they heard the words that they so desperately wanted to hear? Peace be with you. That is what Jesus was offering. That is what they were receiving. And then the Lord tells them, as the Father has sent me in peace to fill you with peace, so here, I send you now in peace to offer peace as well. This whole cycle of peace that comes from the Father to the Son, from the Holy Spirit into us, being shared amongst us. We do not give others our peace. Man-made peace and created peace does not have death. After some time, it fizzles out. Recently, you had summits of the South Korean and North Korean, North Korean Peninsula. You had the U.S. with North Korea, very unexpectedly, suddenly with President Trump. And there was this, this dialogue that went on. And the media, media portrayed it like peace has has been achieved. The presidents declared it like peace has been achieved. But everyone knows there is there's an underlining tension that is always there because this is humanly created peace. Today the world is seeking peace. Everyone is seeking for peace. Peace is not a taboo word. Everyone loves the word peace. Everyone claims to be seeking peace, but from where, from whom? We are seeking peace from the world. We are seeking peace from people. But the world and the people are imperfect. The imperfections are so obvious, so clear. 
And all those imperfections will ultimately lead to the whole concept of peace breaking down. I remember coming across a family. The family, the husband and wife told me how they were struggling with relationships that they have amongst their own siblings. And there's been a lot of tension, a lot of fights, a lot of disagreements because of the property, of how much one brother got, how much the other sister got. And so they all sat together, got a few elders in their, in their families, got the lawyer, saw their parents' will read out. And then there was a discussion that went on for hours together, days together. And ultimately, they found a solution, a solution in inverted commas. If they thought that they found peace at last, that one will not fight against the other. One will not seek for more of the property than the other. But that peace was not, was not for long. A few weeks later, one of the brothers got upset again. One of the sisters got upset that the brother was upset again. And suddenly all hell broke loose. The fight was far worse than it was before. Where did that peace go? Peace that doesn't come from Christ, peace that is not received from above, will not last long. Peace that doesn't come from Jesus, doesn't have death. And that is why the scriptures would tell us in Colossians chapter 3 verse 15, Let peace rule in your hearts. Which peace? The peace of God. The word says, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body. The peace of Christ, let it rule in your heart. That is when you can become one body, different in different natures amongst, amongst your brothers, your sisters around you. But that peace comes in, the peace of Christ comes in only, that peace remains only because it is the peace of Christ. We read in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Make every effort to live in peace with the other. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Pursue peace with everyone, and the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. No one will see the Lord. No one will have lasting peace. No one will have lasting joy if we do not pursue peace with everyone in holiness. That holiness comes from God. It comes from Christ. The peace that Jesus is offering, that peace contains that holiness. And that is what we seek. That is why we see in the life of St. Paul. St. Paul was a person who was knowledgeable. He was, he was very well educated by some very important personalities like Gamaliel. He had knowledge. He was a Jew. He knew the scriptures. But did Paul have peace? Wasn't peace missing in Paul's life? And that is why when even Stephen was being stoned to death, Paul didn't have a problem. Paul could watch a bloodbath going on and Paul didn't feel anything was wrong in it. He had knowledge. He had position. He had status. Where is peace? It takes that experience with Jesus for Paul to know peace. In Acts chapter 9, when Paul is on his way to persecuting the Christians, a man who is knowledgeable, a man who has high position and status in society. Here now he is on his way for what? For violence? Hatred? Anger? Suppression? Oppression? 
But on his way, he has that beautiful experience with Jesus. The Lord knocks him off from his horse, his high pedestal, something that all of us have to be knocked for, knocked from for, in order to be filled with peace. But the Lord knocked him down. And there he would have that beautiful experience with Jesus. The vision of the Lord and the experience of Jesus. The peace of Jesus filling his heart. He changed the man. He was blind. Till that time he had knowledge. He could read scripture. He had knowledge. He had his senses. But he barely had peace. Now here. He's blind. But he has peace. He has found the prince of peace at last. He has now known peace. The Paul we see before Acts chapter 9 and the Paul after Acts chapter 9 is a clear sign and an example for us for one, of one who has known Christ as the source of peace. Dear brothers and sisters, who do we know as the source of our peace? Of, of our peace? Dear brothers and sisters, who do we know as the source of our peace? Is it Christ? Or is it man-made? Am I looking to use my intellectual capabilities and my, and my amazing capabilities of bringing around a solution in people's lives as the source of my peace? Like a person once asked Jesus, Lord, tell my brother to share my father's property with me. The Lord said, who made me a judge over these these material things of yours. You're looking for peace there. Find peace in Jesus. Find peace in the Lord. In Philippians chapter 4 verse 7, St. Paul speaks. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. When will this peace remain in us? When it is peace from Christ. Not peace just because someone else stood as a mediator. Even if it be a priest or it be an elder in your community, your peace doesn't come because a priest stood as a mediator or an elder or a counselor stood as a mediator. Your peace comes and your peace is guarded when that peace comes from Christ. That is why St. Paul would say, say, a man who has understood where his peace comes from, the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, it will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. He is the source of that peace. It is from him that we receive that peace. So beautifully said by the psalmist, in Psalm 29, verse 11. In Psalm 29, verse 11, the psalmist speaks about the Lord who blesses with peace. May the Lord give strength to his people. And may the Lord bless his people with peace. May the Lord strengthen. May the Lord bless with peace. Not anything that comes from the world. The couple who was there in that church along with us, we were there to see the beauty and the grandeur of the church. They were there to see the beauty and the architecture of the church. But that is not what was being celebrated there. That is not what the church was all about. The church was about the Prince of Peace. But as tourists, we can come, we can, we can watch what is there, the architecture, and give a critical evaluation of that. But that is not the essence. That is not the essence of that church. That is not the essence of that faith. The essence of that church and the essence of the faith is Christ and the peace that he offers. No wonder these apostles were so filled and so satisfied after being so empty and dry and desolate, when the Lord came amongst them and said, Peace be with you. 
peace I give you, not like the world offers peace. But my peace is different, says the Lord. My peace doesn't come from the world. My peace comes from my heart. I don't give like the world gives. For what the world gives, the world will take away. John chapter 14, verse 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. That is not my kind of peace. So do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not let them be afraid. Because I give you my peace. Dear brothers and sisters, today as we are in the presence of Jesus, let us remind ourselves, my peace comes from my God. Today we live in a world where peace is a much talked about topic. It is seeked after. But sadly we also live in a world that is very godless. They are trying to find peace without the presence of the Prince of Peace. We human beings have reached a stage where we, where we believe we can create everything. We have gone on to create artificial clouds, artificial rain. We've been able to create artificial islands. Everything is being created. To the extent we are trying to clone babies, we suddenly believed that we have a grasp over everything. And we've also started to believe that we can create peace. But man has always tried to create peace by himself. And that has never lasted. But when it is the peace of Christ, it will remain. Take a person of God, a person of holiness, a person of purity in connection with God. And try to ruffle the feathers of these people. You will not get through. Because they have known peace in their heart. Because they have known Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Do you want to know peace in your heart? Know the Prince of Peace. Search for the Prince of Peace. Desire for the Prince of Peace. And you will remain in peace. Let us close our eyes. And let us thank Jesus for his very presence and his very promise of peace. Peace I give to you, not like that of the world. My peace will remain. Lord Jesus, let your peace remain in our hearts and let your peace be fruitful for us. Let us seek not in our families, in our societies, in our church communities. Let us seek not in our institutions, our centers, the peace that comes from the world. But, O oh Lord, let us seek peace that comes from you. For like St. Paul, we too need to realize that we have found the Prince of Peace. We have found our Messiah, the one who saves and brings peace to our heart. Give us the grace to find you, the Prince of Peace. The essence of our worship, the essence of our life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all. This talk is about the Prince Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, the source of our peace.